Hey friend, John McLennan here, and in this video, you're gonna learn how to play Last Christmas as recorded by Wham! on guitar. Now, if you're looking for an easier holiday tune to play, this one is perfect. It has one repeating chord progression, and I'm gonna show you some pretty cool chord shapes and a little bass line that you can add in between the chords to mix it up as well. Real quick though, if you're new to the channel, before we dive in, I've got a gift for you. I put together this awesome fretboard guide that's gonna show you the five must know chords and scales to map out the entire fretboard. And I wanna give it to you completely for free. All you gotta do is go to johnmclennan.com slash fretboard guide or click the first link down below. All right, well with that said, let's break down this song. Let's break down how to play Last Christmas as recorded by Wham! on guitar. Now we've got just one main progression. We're gonna use four chords. Let me play it for you first and then we'll break it down. Here's what it sounds like. One, two, three, four. Alright, so that's one time through the progression. Now there's four chords you need to know, so we're gonna start off with those. The first chord is a D sus2, and this looks like your typical D chord. From the fourth string down, we would play open, two, three, two, normally for a D, but what we're gonna do is lift off that first string. So we're gonna make that note open there, so it's gonna go open, two, three, open. That's the first chord, it's called D sus2. Then from there, we're gonna move to a B minor 11 chord, and that's gonna be played like this. Here we're gonna play from the fifth string down, two, four, four, three, and then we'll play that first string open. So if you know your typical B minor here, we're gonna just open it up so we've got that high E string ringing in there, just like the first chord. Now, if that's too hard, you could just play like an easier version like this. You could play just two fingers, the first finger on the second fret of the fifth string, and then open fourth string, and the second finger here on the second fret of the third string. And we'll just strum the rest of the strings open. So that's an easier version. I like I like this one. It sounds a little bit more like matching to the recording. So those are the first two chords. D sus2 and then B minor 11. From there, we're gonna go to E minor. And that's just all six strings. Open, two, two, open, open, open. And then A7 will shift down here. We're gonna play from the fifth string down. Open, two, open, two, open. Now I did add a little bass line and I was playing some rhythm, so we'll get into that in a second, but let's just start with reviewing those chords. So we've got D sus2, B minor 11, E minor, and then A7. Now each chord's actually gonna last two bars or eight counts. We could count one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, then switch to three, four, one, two, three, four, then switch two, three, four, one, two, three, four, then A7, two, three, four, one, two, then it restarts back to the top. So that's the progression for the entire song. Now the groove or the strumming pattern that I would put with this is very eighth note based. And we're gonna use a technique called palm muting. So here's what it would sound like just on the D chord. So what I'm doing here is I'm using all downs with my strum hand and I'm playing eighth notes. So one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. So I'm playing two strums every beat. So that's why there's eight in a measure. They call them eighth notes and, and four, four here. And then we're gonna put with that 
what's called some palm muting. So we're going to take this part of our hand and lay it down here where the string and the bridge come together. And we're going to get this muted sound. So instead of it ringing out like this, it's palm muted. Now from there, we're going to add a little accent. We're going to accent the one, the and of two, and then beat four. So it's going to go one and two and three and four and 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 one and two and three four and one and two and so I'm, I'm strumming just slightly harder on those accents. Again, beat one, the and of two, and beat four. And you want to count out loud like what I'm doing. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three. Four and one and two and three. Four and one and two and three and one and two. Now here on the A7 you could do one bar, one and two and three and four, and then you could go play a little bass line. Now, an easier way would be to stay on the A7, but this is nice to add in. This is the second fret of the fifth string up to the fourth fret, then the second fret on the fourth string, and then resolve back to D. Now, that would start on B2, and each bass note would last one beat. So one, and two, and three, and four, and one. If I add eighth notes with that, one, and two, and three, and four, and one. Da, da. Baseline. So start with the chords, just get those shapes. You might want to just go with the song and strum once on each chord as the progression moves. Then as that gets comfortable and your fretting hand is developing the muscle memory, then add more rhythm and start adding those little bass lines and cool things in between. And to help you put this together even more, be sure to pick up my ultimate fretboard guide at the first link down below. And this is gonna show you the five must know chords and scales that I use to map out the entire fretboard. And a lot of the chords that we covered in today's video are gonna be written out on this page as well. So it's gonna tie right in with this lesson. All you gotta do is go to johnmcclennan.com slash fretboard guide or click the first link down below. All right, well, hope you enjoy that gift. As always, thanks for watching, thanks for listening. Have an amazing day, and we'll see you in another video real soon.